So the section uh, five two is called the Ver verifying trig identities. Okay. And some of those strategies that we worked with this last section, we're going to work with this section as well. But again, I would write down some of those primary trig identities that you don't necessarily remember, not necessarily the reciprocals, but the others at the top of the paper every time. That way you writing helps you repeat and you're going to remember it. Okay. So first of all, I'll work with the more complicated side. We've been doing that. And make it equal to the less complicated side. Okay. Look for any factoring opportunities, like we were doing this last section, and any um, opportunities to square a binomial or take a find the perfect square of a, a difference of squares. Opportunities use those fundamental identities. Okay, and if all else fails, try converting everything to sines and cosines. Okay, so sometimes we can use with secants and tangents and cosecants and cotangents, right? But you may be more comfortable and familiar with the sine and cosine, and so you can go back to those fundamental identities if you need to. Okay. All right. So these are all strategies that are in in the book, and I just kind of simplified them, made them a little less. All right. So verifying an identity. Okay. Now, rather than just simplifying, we're actually making the left side of the equation look like the right. Left side is more complicated, right? So we're not going to change the right side whatsoever. We're only going to change the left side. So that looks like a mess. Cosecant squared of theta minus cotangent squared of theta over tangent squared of theta times cosecant squared of theta. There's a fundamental identity that I think is going to help us, right? Okay. Why is that going to help us? Yep, has cotangent and cosecant. So how could I rearrange this to make this match? Subtract cotangent from both sides. What will I have left on this left side? A 1. So that looks a whole lot better already. We're still trying to get it equal to the cosine squared of theta. We're not changing the right side. Just trying to make the left side ma match it. Okay. Now what do you suggest we do? Yeah, let's use a different, another identity. I like that. I don't like having things in the denominator. Or we, we could move them to the numerator. 1 over the tangent squared is the cotangent squared, right? What's 1 over the cosecant squared? Sine squared. So we're making one change each time. Here we rewrote the numerator. Now we're making them, bringing them out of the denominator and basing them on the reciprocal functions. Yep, all I did was took this identity that we know, and I said, I want to make it look like this. So what would I do? I would take away the cotangent squared from both sides. And so 1 is actually equal to the cosecant squared minus the cotangent squared. So then I substituted 1 in for that cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. Okay. What's the next step? Cotangent cosine over sine. 
So let's write cosine squared over sine. And the signs will cancel because we have one in the numerator, one in the denominator. They're factors. There's no sums involved here, no differences. And so yep. So all we've done is we've rewritten things one step at a time to make the left side equal the right side. Mm-hmm. Then we said we know cotangent squared is equal to the cosine squared over sine squared. Because um, tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. Cotangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared. Okay, so we just rewrote it as cosine squared over sine squared because then we're getting everything into terms of sines and cosines. Okay? Yes, sir. Could have, I'm sorry, repeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could have put this all under the same denominator if we wanted to. Absolutely. And shifted this over, and now sine squared over sine squared is still 1. Yep, and we're done. That's it. Uh -huh. On the left side over here, um, I know that my tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. And I know my cotangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared. So I just substituted this guy in. Okay? And I'm getting it back to just sines and cosines. Everybody good? Okay? All right, next example. Oh, you bet. All right, here we go. Now we're to verify that the, I, the identity that 1 over secant y minus 1 plus 1 over secant y plus 1 is equal to 2 cotangent y plus cosecant y. It has to. Yep, if we make a mistake along the way, then it won't. Then you've done something, yep, you've made some, some mistake along the way. Yep. Provided we've not made any typos or what have you, the left side should always equal the right side on these identities. Especially when the directions say verify. Um, it could say, you know, it's potentially, you know, potentially they could say, hey, does the does this equal such and such? Um, but for the most part, we're just wanting you to practice your skills, learn your identities, be ready to go. All right, suggestions. Are we going to work with the left side or the right side? Left. I think the left looks more complex, doesn't it? Okay. So what can I do to the left side? So secant is 1 over cosine, right? But the problem is that we've got this sum hanging out. So when it's only products, we can flip things around. But if we have fractions and we have products in those fractions, then we have to do something to make them combine first. Okay? So if I had 1 over x minus 1 and 1 over x plus 1, and I wanted to add those two together, what would I have to do? Get, a, get the same denominator, right? Yep, yep. So we're going to get the left side times a secant y plus 1 
So let me write it over here. So we have this 1 over secant y minus 1 plus 1 over secant y plus 1. So if I multiply the left side, or this first one, by this denominator, I have to do the same in the numerator. And then I have to do the same thing on the other side, right? Now they'll all be over the same thing. So I'm going to have one nice common denominator of secant y minus 1 and secant y plus 1 in the denominator. And in the numerator, secant y plus 1 times 1 and a 1 times a secant y minus 1. What are these going to add up to? We have one of these and one of these, so a total of 2 secant of y plus 1 minus 1, gone. Okay. And that's still going to be equal to this 2 cotangent y cosecant y. That's not changing. We want to keep that consistent. What is this if I multiply it out? Secant squared minus 1 secant y plus 1 secant y gone, so minus 1. So I multiplied this one by this one, top and bottom, okay? And I multiplied this one by this, top and bottom, okay? So the secant y and secant y are going to be added for two of them, and a positive one and a negative one is what goes away, okay? I just had rewritten them as, as I brought them both down. This is the common denominator that they now have. And then this is what it is when we multiply it together. So I put an intermediate step so I wouldn't lose anybody. Okay. What is the secant squared y minus 1? Tangent, tangent squared. Okay. So now we've got a 2 secant y over tangent squared y. So secant over tangent squared, um, a 1 in front of, okay, you're jumping a couple steps ahead, okay. So secant is really 1 over the cosine. Is everybody okay with me making this go down below and be a cosine? y, not x. Okay, this guy's going down as a cosine. The 2 staying up here where it was. And if the tangent squared of y is in the denominator, it really should be cotangent squared in the numerator. Okay, so this guy's going to go up as a cotangent squared. Because it was already a 2, it wasn't a 2 to the negative 1 power or a reciprocal of anything, so it's going to stay put. The secant went down, tangent came up, the secant's now a cosine, the tangent's now a cotangent, coming in the numerator. 
Okay, that should be it should be Ys. I'm sorry. I just I started to write an X, and then I realized I changed up from a Y. No, nope, that's supposed to be a Y. Okay, but what is cotangent? Cosine over sine. So we come back up here. We have two times a cosine squared y over sine squared y. That's the cotangent. And then we have this cosine here still as well. Okay, if I kind of separate them out so I can show what this guy is. What happens to cosine of y and cosine squared y? Bottom's going to cancel. And we won't have a squared on top anymore. It's just going to be to the first power, right? Okay. So I have two of these cosines. Mm -hmm. Well, this is sine squared in the denominator. Yes, sir. Um, good question. It was a secant. Okay. So if it comes to the denominator, it's, an, it's now a 1 over cosine. And so it stays, it was in the denominator. Okay. So here's our 2 cosine y. Now we've got to contend with that sine squared, right? Okay. Okay, isn't cosine over sine cotangent? And 1 over sine is cosecant, so we've got 2 cotangent y, cosecant y. This one, I switched that cotangent, is now going to become a cosine and, and a sine. Cosine squared, sine squared, and the cosine came over here. Why is which one? Um, it, it, it was it, it can be. I just moved it to the basically I split this off into into a cosine squared sine squared. And then it could be over cosine over 1, right? And when I bring it up, it's going to be 1 over cosine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Another example. Yep, I'll hold it for a second. Can you see these take a lot of paper? Okay. Can you see I'm not going to give you a lot of problems? Okay. Like a five or six problem assignment type of thing. All right, ready? No? This is the final answer. I just ran out of vertical space. <laughs> Cotangent, yep, cotangent y, cosecant y. Like a puzzle, you just have to work your way through that puzzle. Okay? All right. So, I think this is the last example. Nope, two, ad two identity. Three more. Sorry, I don't know that we need to do them all, but I want to show you at least one more. Actually, this one should be pretty simple, right? Okay. This one won't take as long. <laughs> so cosecant squared minus one, what are we going to rewrite that as? Cosecant squared minus one.
of tangent squared, right? Because if I try to foil this out, I'm going to end up with a mess. So let's call this cotangent squared theta this time. What's cosine squared minus 1? Sine squared or negative sine squared? Good question. So sine squared plus cosine squared, right? So cosine squared minus 1, I'm bringing the 1 to this side. That means the sine's got to go to the other side. So it's going to be a negative sine squared. What's cotangent squared? Cosine over sine. So it's cosine squared, sine squared, times a negative sine squared. Sine squareds cancel, right? Negative cosine squared. So some will be quick like that, and some of them will. You'll be working your way around for a while. Okay. All right, do you want to see more examples or do you want to have 10 minutes to work while you're in here and ask questions? 10 minutes to work? Because these are all going to be very similar, okay? This one's nothing special. That one's not going to be too bad either, okay? So six problems, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 